Hi everyone, my name is Felix Pauk and together with my colleagues we submitted the journal first paper Taint Bench – Automatic Real-World Malware Benchmarking of Android Taint Analysis. This title is already the outline for my presentation today. So first I will remind everyone what a Taint Analysis is in the Android context. Then I will explain how to benchmark such analysis and how, to, how we automated this process. In the end, I will try to convince you that it really pays off to integrate real-world malware benchmarks such as TaintBench. So let's start. So imagine you have your Android mobile device and on there are a couple of apps installed and they comprise dozens of source code statements. And some of these statements are sources. Statements that extract sensitive information, for example, the device location or the contact data you once entered. And then there are statements that are syncs. They are leaking information to the outside, probably unknown to the user, by uploading data to the internet or sending an SMS to an unknown recipient. So the question a Taint Analysis tries to answer is if there are con connections existent between sources and syncs, so-called Taint Flows. And if the answer is no, then everything is fine. If no source is connected to, a, to any sync, then that's fine. But if there is a connection, then we may have a problem. So, in a benchmark, or a single benchmark app, we comprise such benchmark cases of connected sources and sinks. So, this particular example here includes one expected benchmark case with the second source accessing the contact data that is actually connected to the sink. So, this is the first benchmark case of this benchmark app, which is an expected one. And we have one unexpected one. So the first source accessing the device's location is not connected to the sync. So if a taint analysis tool finds this connection, that is an unexpected finding and it is a wrong finding, so that would be a false positive. Hence, we uh, document expected and unexpected cases for a benchmark app. A whole benchmark suit then comprises dozens or hundreds or how many you ever can find uh, of these benchmarks apps. So these are the terms I will use throughout the presentation. And one more term, well, whenever I talk about running a benchmark or to run a benchmark or simply to benchmark a tool, that's the process I refer to. We want to execute the tool or multiple tools per benchmark app or case and we want to compare the expected against the actual results output by the tools. Okay, so we had two major contributions along with our study uh, considering TaintBench. So the first is the TaintBench suite. So we started with more than 300 malware apps and then we um, came down to 42 candidates that uh, should make it into our um, Taint bench suit. To reduce the number, we uh, considered behavioral information if it was available and if it was sensible to use in that context. So we basically needed the information if this type of malware actually leaks information, so if it comprises any taint flows, and we regressed it to be uh, the source code to be available or at least to be. Um, in a decompilable state such that we can can get the source code. Then from this um, 42 candidates we removed three more during peer reviews. Um, so all the taint flows we could find in these candidates we documented and uh, with multiple authors did that and only if they could come to an agreement we added the taint flows and the respective apps to our set that belongs to the suit. So we ended up with 39 apps that fulfill the following three criteria. So the apps are representative, that means um, they represent the whole data set and they really address static analysis challenges. So similar to um, micro benchmarks like DroidBench where you have different categories of challenges, we have all these challenges in our Taint Bench suit as well uh, and they are documented in the associated um, yeah, documentations of each benchmark app. The second criterion is source code availability. So we have made sure that all the findings we have can be validated um, in, the, in the source code. So we can validate our ground truths and 
since the source code is available, you can also inspect the results in that source code. Uh, as I said, we use the source code to document the ground truth. So for all these um, 39 benchmark apps, we have explicitly documented expected and unexpected um, benchmark cases in a machine readable and human readable format. So our final suit comprises these 39 benchmark apps for which we documented more than 240 benchmark cases, 203 of them are expected and almost 50 are unexpected cases. The whole suit is available online on our website. There you can also find additional information, statistics about the apps. You can, um, you can uh, uh, inspect the source code of all these apps online, etc. Also on this website is our second major contribution along with the, season, uh, with the study, which is the TaintBench framework. So the framework supports you during three phases of benchmarking. The first phase is construction. So when you want to construct a benchmark, you have to document sources, things, and the connections between them, the so-called taint flows. So you can do all that via our plugin, which we wrote for JUDX. So instead of writing XML code directly, which is a tedious task to do, you can simply um, use our extension for JUDX and do it via the GUI. Then for the evaluation part, the second phase, we extended ReproDroid, such that it takes the output of the first phase to create an executable benchmark that is actually reproducible. And for the third phase, the inspection phase, so here you can inspect the ground truths you created in the first phase or the results you determined in the second phase, and here you can inspect them. That means you can really open up Visual Studio Code and directly see from where to where our taint flows going, what are the intermediate steps, etc. And you can also compare your results from the first and the second phase. Now I will continue to present you the results we determined by our own, our own framework um, in the evaluations we conducted along with this study. Before I do so, I will explain you our setup for this evaluation. So we use two benchmark suits. The first one is a droid bench, a micro benchmark suit. Uh, it is always used when a taint analysis tool is proposed in the area, proposed and evaluated in the area of Android and of course taint bench. We employed four tools, basically two tools, but two different versions each. The table shows the details of these um, different versions. The important thing you have to uh, notice here are these asterisks. So the new version of Amandroid and the new version of Flowdroid is always marked or highlighted with this asterisk at the end. Have that in mind. We overall conducted six different experiments. In this presentation I won't talk about experiment five and six, but the details are in the paper. But I will talk about the first four experiments. So here we have a list of the experiments. First, um, let's talk about the identifier. The identifier refers to the benchmark suit we used. So DB stands for Droid Bench, for example, TB for Taint Bench. Then we have these numbers, which refer to the experiment that was conducted. So DB2 and TB2 both deal with um, suit level sort and sources and sinks. So for all these different experiments, we used different levels of sources and sinks. So we differently adapted the tools to the, with respect to the benchmark. So for the first one, it's a default list of sources and sinks that comes with the tool. Then for DB2, it's a list of sources and sinks that only holds those that appear in any app of Droid Bench. Similarly, in TB2, it's only those sources and sinks that appear somewhere in Tank Bench. For TB3, we um, made this even more accurate by using only sources and things that appear in the respective app that we are currently analyzing. And at maximum, TB4, we did this with respect to the benchmark case. Okay, um, to execute these um, experiments, we used the AQL, the Android App Analysis Query Language. So for each of these different levels of source and sync lists, etc., uh, we could just formulate a different query and then we could run the benchmark for each um, of these 
levels. So we know this is an over adaption that you probably cannot make in reality, but this will fulfill our purpose here. Just be aware that this is some sort of over adaption. Before we start taking a look at the result, let me briefly talk about the um, evaluation matrix, precision recall and F measure and what they mean in our context. So first we have to count our findings. So let's assume this circle here describes the taint flows that are actually found by an analysis tool. And let us assume this green circle here are the expected cases we formulated in our baseline of taint bench. Then we can see if we find a taint flow that was expected or that matches an expected case, then it is a true positive. If we don't find it, it's a false negative. On the other hand, for the unexpected cases, we can say if an unexpected case matches a, found, uh, a taint flow that was actually found, then it is a false positive. And last but not least, if um, an unexpected case does not have a matching um, counterpart in form of a found taint flow, then it's a true negative. So intuitively, precision de describes the taint flows that were found and only that portion of it that is correct. So that is correctly identified as a taint flow. And recall describes all the taint flows that were expected and actually are found by the analysis tool. Well, and the F measure is a combination of precision and recall, the harmonic mean. Okay, with respect to taint bench, then we have one more problem. We have this question mark area here, since our ground truth is most likely incomplete. That's why we all also call it just a baseline. But um, with respect to the evaluation I'm going to describe next, this question mark area does not exist. Why doesn't it, it exist? Well, we did an iterative process. So we started running our, our benchmark and then we saw, okay, there are flows in this question mark area. So what did we do? We either added them to our ground truth, to our baseline, or we explained why they should not be included. For example, there were partial flows describing a tiny part of a bigger taint flow. So the big taint flow is probably, with its intermediate steps, is probably in our baseline, but we did not um, document all the tiny partial parts. Okay, but this way we can use the ground truths um, to automatically compute precision recall and F measure. So let's finally start with the results. So here is experiment one. On the left we have precision, in the middle we have recall, on the right we have F measure. The dark bars show the results for droid bench and the lighter bars the results for taint bench. And it's only um, experiment one right now. So if we take a look at precision, we already see a drop here for the old version of a mandroid. So precision drops quite a lot, by more than, by about 25% we could say, even more. And if we look at recall and F measure, this effect becomes more obvious. So for all the different tools, the accuracy drops if we switch from the micro benchmark droid bench to our real world malware benchmark taint bench. So are the tools probably over adapted to a micro benchmark? Well, let's see. So here again, we see the results for droid bench only. And uh, we see the two different experiments. So the experiments using the default sources and sync list and the experiment using the source and sync list with respect to the individual benchmark suit. And as we can see here, there are tiny changes, but th they don't influence the results that much. This changes when we take a look at taint bench. So um, let's not talk about precision here because it's a little bit counterintuitive here. But let's have a look at recall and consequently F measure. As we can see, with increasing precision of the sources and sync list, the, these um, accuracy metrics go higher. So we can artificially increase the accuracy. So now let's compare Droid Bench to Taint Bench and um, have a look at the F measure only now. As we can see, these values for experiment two, for example, drop when we switch from a droid bench to taint bench. And they even drop if we do this known over adaption of adapting sources and sinks. So 
Under no circumstances, the tools are as good as they are for the micro benchmark. So we probably could uh, replace the question mark over there by an exclamation mark. What we can certainly say is that if we look at the full picture, that source and sync lists are crucial. They highly impact the outcome of an analysis, as we can see here that all the tools are influenced by the different sources and sinks list used. And what we also found out is that there is no perfect source and sync list. So you cannot specify one source and sync list that works in every context. So then we have these old and new versions of Amandroid and Flowdroid. So now let's compare if we have differences between the old and the new version of each tool. First, again, let's have a look at Droidbench. This is only experiment two, by the way. Okay, and um, if we take a look at the bars with our own eyesight, we can already see that there are some drops. In, in precision, it's hard to see, but for recall and F measure, it's obvious to see that the actually the newer versions of Amandroid are worse than the old version. So that means there is a regression that could have been detected by just using Droidbench already. Now let's look at let's have a look at the results with Taintbench. So here we can actually see way more regressions. Actually, for Amandroid and Flowdroid, we see that the new version of the tool of each tool is less precise than the um, the old version. So the regressions become more visible with Taintbench. This is why we suggest to integrate Taintbench into your continuous integration pipeline if you are a developer of a Taint analysis tool. Okay. Well, that's it with respect to the results, so let me briefly summarize. summarize. I presented to you Taintbench, its suite comprising um, 39 benchmark apps with dozens, hundreds of benchmark cases. The framework that we use to construct this suite, to evaluate it, and to inspect the results we, uh, we, documented, uh, um, we determined with the suite. And I presented to you our evaluation results. All this information can also be found on our um, GitHub website or you just scan this QR code here. So that's all I have to say. I'm really looking forward to see everyone in Pittsburgh at the XC 2022. To that effect, all I have to say is, let's go Steelers! Here we go!